the transformation taking place in Ethiopia's landscapes is based not just on a participatory climate smart approach, but on appropriate conservation technologies too. Promoted by the Sustainable Land Management Program. A range of methods are used. Here are six of the best. Stone buns are built along the contours of hillsides. These low stone walls are nothing new. Farmers have been building them for centuries. But it's a tradition that has been recognized as valuable and scaled up for impact. Some soil is backfilled above the terrace and sediment captured from runoff that flows downslope. Over time, the land begins to level off forming a basic type of terrace. It's labour-intensive, but where there's plenty of stone, like in Tigray, this is a good option. What's more, stone buns are versatile. They can be used on cropland and to rehabilitate rangeland as well. Bench terraces are a recent innovation inspired by a trip to China's rehabilitated Lers Plateau. These wide terraces made a strong impression on the Ethiopian visitors, who have replicated what they saw. With careful design, these benches capture more rainfall while holding the soil better. But construction is heavy work and requires mass participation of local communities. Due to their cost, they are only used where the returns are high, from cash crops like vegetables and fruits. Earth buns are an option where there's no stone, for example in parts of Aromia. Here, earth is the simplest solution to create a level contour barrier. Grasses are planted on the buns to stabilize them. The grass yields an extra benefit. It provides fodder for livestock. Trenches are dug above the buns. They capture water, which sinks into the soil for better plant growth. Care must be taken to site the buns along the contour, or breakages may occur. Check dams prevent soil loss where gullies have formed or if rills are growing deeper. Where gullies are small, loose stone may be used. If they are large, packed gabion baskets give greater stability. Check dams are designed so that water can't flow around them. Wing walls are cut into the gully bank and a spillway formed in the middle. This ensures that runoff is controlled and sediment captured. Grasses and trees are planted in the gully bed. Growing vegetation heals the scar in the land and makes it productive. Micro basins are well known in Africa. They've been used to great effect in Burkina Faso and Niger, where they're called half moons. In Ethiopia, they're also valued to capture runoff. Microbasins are made from earth or from stone. They range from very small to several meters in radius. Larger structures are built with soakaway pits in their catchments to help runoff sink into the ground. Overflow is held as it travels over the surface. The pits fill and soak the soil around them. This helps thirsty tree seedlings to establish themselves and grass to recover too. Runoff is also held by the microbasins. They are designed to allow excess water to run safely downslope into the next row of structures. Some rainwater infiltrates below the root zone, replenishing the water table. Deep trenches are used to support tree seedlings.
They are made where the slopes are steep and the earth is deep. Trenches run across the slope, separated from each other by a small space. They are dug deep to capture water. And trees are planted on the bund or on a step in the trench where their roots can tap into the harvested rainwater. Each of these six measures, stone buns, bench terraces, earth buns, check dams, micro basins, deep trenches, and others too, have a common goal. Keeping soil in place and capturing rainwater. They help to re-green the landscape, and this brings direct benefits to land users. There are advantages all round, but best of all, it's Ethiopia's people who are reaping the deserved rewards of their efforts.